Hello friends, my name is Becky Monroe and I'm a supervisor of living collections here at Three Lakes Nature Center. So I help with taking care of the animals and maintaining a healthy environment for them here at the Nature Center. Um, I'm going to let you all meet one of my friends here, one of our resident turtles. This is a little turtle, but it's not a baby. This is an adult. This is as big as this type of turtle gets. This is the common musk turtle. And he's called a musk turtle for a name, and I'll give you a clue. His other, his nickname is stink pot turtle. And the reason why is he's got little scent glands right under his armpits here and here, and he can give off a very stinky smell. And the reason he does that is to protect himself from predators, so he will taste awful. You can see he's a little bit scrambly, but he'll probably calm down in a little while. The reason he's a little agitated is because they're used to staying in water at all times and they're in kind of a dark environment. They live up underneath um, the roof balls and the roof clusters along the water's edges in ponds, streams, uh, rivers, even you know pools of water. Uh, that because of their compact size, they can go about anywhere. You can see he's doing something. Let's see if he'll do it. There he goes. Some people mistake them for baby snapping turtles because they do that and they will bite. So you do have to be careful. It's best to just leave them alone. They have a very sharp beak. They're used to eating things like um, uh, uh, what they would find in the water, uh, worms and um, snails. So that sharp beak helps them to crush a snail shell so they can eat that. As, as um, when they're juveniles, they eat Juveniles, they eat more of, a, of a, a meat diet, a carnivorous diet, but as they age up and become adults, they'll eat, they'll eat, uh, they become more omnivorous, so they eat plants and meat. A very cute puppy. You can see he's got a shell, top and bottom, and the top shell is called a carapace. The bottom shell is a plastron, and for these little guys, it's almost like a box turtle. He's got a little hinge, so he can close it up. He won't close all the way today, but he's got a little hinge here and here where he can close his shell just for protection. And then it's a very hard surface for something to eat. If they come out of the water, it's, it's rarely, and it's usually to bask, get some sunlight on their shell to keep it healthy and hard. And they can be predated upon by raccoons and skunks, in the water, um, snapping turtles would be their problem. And he also, I don't know if you can see this, but he's got little barbels, little fleshy projections on his chin so that as he's going along in the darkness underwater, he can feel his way around. Now this is a, uh, the one way you can tell between males and females with some of our turtles is the length of their tail. And you can see his tail is pretty long for a little for a little turtle. So this is a little boy. If it was a girl, it would be much shorter. We keep him in water at temperatures at a little cool because under deeper underwater, you get a, a cooler temperature than what you have up on land. You can see he's got a little. He's got um, claws on his feet. Those help for tearing apart vegetation and food. Um, if it was a female, it would help with digging a nest. They are egg layers. Uh, they will come up on land and, and go under the leaf litter to dig, their, um, to dig their little nest and deposit up to nine eggs. The eggs are like a leathery soft egg, not a hard egg like a bird. And we do a study um, on our lakes. We have done a study for the past 20 years on these little guys. And what we do is we, we capture them, we set out traps that we put in the water that are baited uh, to draw them in. It is a harmless trap, it does not hurt them. They just go in and can't get out, kind of like a crab trap. Then we retrieve them and we, we take data from them. So we'll use an item like this that's attached to the shell and it gives us the weight. We will pinch it on the edge of the shell and um, hang them by that and it gives us their weight. And we will also take specific measurements. So we have calipers here that we use. And we take length and width and other data points that are needed. Like there's a little piece of the shell that's right here called a nuchal. We even measure that. 
and we put all of our information on data sheets that look like this and we save them for our records and then when we come out the next time we're doing traffic we actually have a number system for these turtles so we know if we're catching the same turtle over and over we take a small file and we make notches it's almost like a code so every notch on each little piece of the shell around the edge tells us which turtle we've recaptured so we can keep continuing data on them to see if they're growing. We can also check for females if they're carrying eggs so we know when they're laying eggs. Um, some of the time you'll find these guys with uh, damage to the shell so we know all of that so we can, it just helps us in identification. So that's the story on these little guys. Thanks so much for tuning in.